Hello everyone. Welcome to another on the water episode of Rick's Fly Bench. Today I would like to introduce you to fly fishing in Strathcona Park. This provincial park is the oldest park in British Columbia and covers more than 2400 square kilometers in the heart of Vancouver Island. It is comprised of some stunningly high mountains, some that rise to over 7,000 feet, valley bottom lakes, mountain tarns, and crystal clear rivers. My friend Garland and I love to fish one of the estuaries in the large valley bottom lakes. This lake has literally dozens of streams flowing into it from the forest cladded mountains, and many of them hold healthy populations of cutthroat and rainbow trout. Now while not big compared to interior standards, these trout are very colorful, very feisty, willing to take the fly and set amongst some of the most stunning scenery you can imagine. While Garland is relatively new to the fly fishing game, having only come to it in the last couple of years, and there are still some kinks in his game, he is eager to learn and improve it quickly, as you will see in the video. So why don't you join Garland and I for a day trip fly fishing Strathcona Park. So here we are at Strathcona Park at the beginning of June. It's June the 1st here. We're down in the lowland valleys, one of the big lakes in Strathcona. We're going to be fishing one of the estuaries of the rivers that flow in. We just saw a school of fish in the shallows, eh, Garland? It looked like a pretty good sized school area. Eh? It looked like about six or seven, one and a half pounders. Actually, I saw probably about 15. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get our lines in the water. Garland's already ahead of me. I got to catch up here. So uh, we'll bring you in on the action when we get some fish. Do I eat, see you eating a banana? Did you, look at, you dared to bring a banana? That's bad luck, isn't it? Oh man, Garland, <laughs> anything but a banana. <laughs> now, let me tell you. It's only, it's only bad luck if you don't eat it. Oh, I never heard that before. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm going Yeah. With. So where do you think this banana myth started? What happened? <laughs> like, how did it begin? I can't, like, why banana? Why not oranges or apples? <laughs> I'm eating some apple chips. Yeah. Probably had something to do with a mermaid or a siren on some deserted island. Okay. I'd heard it was like when they, they first started crating bananas to ship them around the world, there often be like tarantulas and other spiders hanging around the boat. So they didn't like having bananas in the bit on the on the boat because what could be hiding in the crate. I like the mermaid story better. Okay. <laughs> so there we go. First rainbow of the day. Actually, got some cutthroat markings to him. I thought yeah, cutthroat. looks like a native cutthroat. Let's let that guy go. Oh, there's another fish right here. There he goes. Oh, I dropped him right above the spook. If we sit anchored, we'll be uh, we'll do just fine here.
number of fish? There's one right there. Get the wind behind you and it helps, eh? Yeah. You want to try casting my rod? I'm filming here. Okay. You just bring yours in and lay it down there and let it sit sit in the water and you can try casting my rod. <laughs> what a difference, eh? What a difference. What a difference. Now just work that real slow and you, you're going to pick up a fish. What a difference. Yeah, you get properly line, matched line to that rod, and you're going to do a lot better. Well, I do have six at home, so I'm going to... Yeah. Let's pop it Butterfly. Oh, and slow. Take your time. Just inch it in. Okay, they got the current working. Yeah, pulling the line down. There you go, fish on. Nice, nice. That didn't take very long, eh? No, it makes all the difference in the world. You want me to net it? Or uh, you can net it yourself. I'll net them. Catch it, catch it on the video. Yeah. There he is. Yeah, a good size. Yeah, it's a good size one. Beautiful. He looks tired though. Yeah. Hey. Oh, he's a good size. Tired fish is better than no fish. Nice. Some surface action. Nice. Nice. Beauty. Let me see that smile. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Lake gave you some good fish this spring. It was great. That was yeah. early May, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A week and a half into May. Yeah. Okay. It's been a little while, but we got one here. There we go. Beautiful little rainbow, I think. Hard to say. We'll see when we get it up. Rainbow or cutty. A little one compared to the other ones this morning. Oh, they're little jewels. Little jewels. Get them in the net. Wah, got it. Gotcha. All right. Oh, that's come out. Gotta release this little guy. That didn't take long. We got in the colder water back up here again. Where you want? You wanted to be all along. Yeah. <laughs> Checked your fly recently? Uh, 
every good every now and then it's good to check your fly as my uh, object lesson so clearly demonstrated yeah yeah that's good enough then You just had a coronament land on your hat. Okay. So, uh, Garland, I hope this we can pick this up on the microphone. Uh, I want to talk about the difference in the casting between the rod that's balanced with its line and, and the rod that is. What, what did you notice? Well, I just bought a new rod, a six weight rod, not that long ago actually. And even though I'm a novice caster, I can definitely feel the difference in the rod. So I happily put my four weight line on that I had just bought. I didn't want to waste it. Yep. And it feels like you're trying to throw a paper towel yeah. into the wind. Yeah. Um, the rod's doing a great job, and the line just isn't heavy enough to get out there. Right. So as, as, a, as a new fly caster, we've talked about you know, equipment and stuff like that, and um, the importance of balancing rod and line weight. Would you, would you concur that uh, I've been giving you good, good advice? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, so what, what are you going to do when you get home? <laughs> well, I do actually have some... Interestingly enough, some six weight line that I'm going to pop back on this reel. Okay. And uh, take it out probably next yeah. week and give it a try. Yeah, because absolutely your your casting looked ex like an experienced, a uh, long time angler when you were casting with my outfit. Good deer. Here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you've got the skills necessary to cast like a pro. Just get that uh, line matched up the rod tip, and it's gonna gonna change your game all completely. Darling, you're into a fish. Yeah. I'm already though. That's the one you just released. Okay. <laughs> Ah, oh, there's more fish in here than that. There we go. Let's have a look there. Yeah, you got your line dancing around there. You got the net handy. Yep. Nice, nice work. On the micro leech. On the micro. On the micro leech. Beauty. Rick, That's Rick, the only thing working today. Rick's personal tied micro leech. There. The yeah, there. Tell me what side you're going to bring them. I'll bring them on this the side we're on. That's where we are. Putting up some big fish, but it's certainly got a bunch of jam here. Yeah. Now well, we're getting this on film. Okay. This is good. Nice. The old. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. You got the net handy there. Out there now. He's fighting hard. Yeah, he is. Look at that rod tip bend, right? Eh? Love it. Not a very big one. But... Yeah, they fight hard for their size. That's a beautiful native cutthroat, eh? Or is this, this uh, might be a rainbow. No, it's darker. It's darker than the previous one. I'll get this in the net. Get this guy put back. It's definitely a different fish. Look at that. Look at that garlic. Nice size one. Oh, it's beauty, yeah. It's beauty. It's a little bit dark, eh? A little bit dark. Nice fish. Beautiful little gems in this cold water. Hey, Garland? They're beauty, and some of them are real fighters. They are. 
He's got the current to help him there too a little bitty. Is that net handy? Woo! Look at that. Nice fish. Just look at him fighting there. Oh, putting a bend in the rod. Beautiful. Beautiful. On the jig head leech again. This one, black and chartreuse. That's been doing the business for me. Look at that beautiful rainbow. Get that hook out of there, that barbless hook. That's the biggest fish for all day. Look at that. Yeah, it's a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Look at the colors. Gorgeous colors. Way you go, bud. Thanks for the fight. You're going to be fine. Get your breath. Ready to go? Are you? Tell me when you're ready to go, bud. Give me a flick of the tail. There you go. Nice. So another great day on the water, Garland, eh? Awesome. One of our That's favorite beautiful. spots here in the in Strathcona Park. We love hitting the river mouths down here for the, we got a mixture of cutthroat and rainbows. How many in total? We were north of 15, probably not 20, but. Yeah, close in there, somewhere between 15 and 20. And some really bright fish along with the dark fish, right? Along with some spawners, yeah. But it was the micro leech. The yeah. micro leech had to be the ticket, right? It was. We tried different things. Yeah. And yeah, that was the thing that was working. Yeah, and it was a tungsten beaded micro leech that gets down deep in the, in the moving water. And the sink tip line seemed to be getting more hits than the floating line today, right? Yeah, very much so. Just getting down deeper to the fish. And so, and then you, you found out something about your casting. You're a good caster. I'm a good caster. Given the right equipment. <laughs> I just got the wrong gear. Yeah. Well, we'll get that fixed up for you. And you're going to be casting like a pro soon. Yeah. Maybe get you out teaching some lessons to some newbies sometime in a little while. Well, that was a great day. And I hope uh, that you learned something from this. The, the micro leech, the, the tungsten beaded jig head micro leech was the ticket today. And you can find that, that fly on my channel. Yeah. So I thank you for watching this episode of Rick's Fly Bench on the Water. And until next time, hope to see you on the water. Bye for now.